Dear Bassa, I hope you find this. I was out scavenging when I spotted the big old machina. I mean, the big four-legged ones. All of them carrying crates, but to where? Moving heavy equipment. Possibly supplies? I wonder if they're done hunting us and starting to build forts for the Russians. That would be just our luck. I'm not sure I could stomach pulling the trigger on a real person instead of a robot, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. If they're getting ready for something, I have to know. One way or another, they're up to no good. Stay safe. Good luck. Yannick. Dear Bassa, in case you're reading this, I need to let you know what I found. Share it with the others if I don't come back. I hate to be so grim, but it pays to be a pragmatist in these times. So the big old machines were carting cargo about. The big ones move real slow, so I spent hours just observing them. Luck dropped on my lap. After a while, I realized they stashed some of their valuable cargo here, and if you're careful not to get caught, there's good ammunition inside. The rounds that Karen likes. Grab some extra. Don't weigh yourself down, though. The wiring on them is unlike any I've ever seen. I've always been good at being patient and watching. It came useful for my old job. Now I guess it's useful when fighting killer robots. I'm going to keep monitoring these machines to see what other supplies the machines draw. Restock everything when you get your tail back to base. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. I made it through Ostrovik alone when the machina dropped out of the sky and opened fire on all of us. Consider me your big brother. It's my job to look after you, not the other way around. Your friend, Yannick. December 19th, 1989. Dear Bassa, if you're reading this, if you found this note, please make sure the others know where I am. At this point, I'm beginning to think I might not be home for a while. I started following one of the big four-legged machina because it looks like they're gathering supplies for another invasion. Also, every so often, I can steal something good off of them. That's when I found these strange power lines. Dozens of them, all leading south. They look so much like ours that I almost didn't notice them. But when I realized the machines were building them, I immediately went into engineer mode and started trying to puzzle them out. By all accounts, they look like normal overhead power lines. There's no other function that they could serve. They might put a hole in the alien invader theory, though. But what are they powering? My first instinct is to destroy it and sabotage them, but I don't want to notify them of my position and risk leading them to you. I'm going to follow this trail and see where it leads. Surely, it leads somewhere. As always, stay safe, your friend, Yannick. December 21st, 1989. Dear Bassa, I don't really think you're reading this. In fact, I hope you're not, because we're deep in enemy territory. We're always in enemy territory, but you know what I mean. At this point, I think I'm just starting the notes like this out of habit. I've always been accused of being too polite for my own good. Cal says he likes it, at least. Marta always liked it too, said I was a good influence on her son. When all else fails, good manners can still remind us of what civilization ought to be, or, or something. I was just raised right, I think. The Machina are building forts. They look almost like those rushed camps the Swedish army were erecting every other day when the invasion first started. Maybe Freddy is right, and the Russians are coming to wipe us out for good. I know Uncle Cal thinks it's aliens, or our own government. When he gets really into it, he insists it's aliens created by our government. Good old Uncle Cal. After seeing the kind of destruction the machines can wreck, I'm not sure what to believe anymore. One thing I know for sure, the machines are our enemies. But why would machines need four walls and a roof? They don't. So there must be something inside that they're protecting. What could it be? Russian soldiers? A new weapon? Whatever it is, they're using human tactics to try to keep us out. 
Maybe we have them scared. Your friend, Yannick. December 23rd, 1989. Dear Bassa, while out stalking the machines to gather more information, I discovered some horrible furnace they built. Larger than the devil and twice as ugly. The machines often go and offer it sticks, trees, fuel, that kind of thing. Puts a wrench in my old notes, though. I thought the machines were solar-powered, or perhaps even wind-powered. I know that sounds like something out of uh, sci-fi, but, well, look at us. I'll have to go revise my old notes. Gotta go back to the drawing board. So, the machines use wood, or maybe coal, to power the generator. That means maybe they aren't that much more advanced than us. That's good news, I, I think. When they use the generator to power other structures, and also to power themselves? Do, do I have this right? I, I still don't know exactly how they work. If only I could get my hands on one intact and take it apart. A more clever man would have found a solution by now, I bet. Still, this is all useful information to have. I'll do my best to get this intel to the others. Perhaps from there we can form a plan. Cal is crazy, but crazy like a fox. Maybe he'll know what to do. Better to know than not know. Better to be prepared than to be caught off guard again. Your friend, Yannick. December 24th, 1989. Dear Marta, I keep thinking about that first summer in Sweden. We were still trying to learn the language, so we wrote notes to each other every day. We'd sit at the table with a dictionary and a grammar book and do corrections on each other's papers. You were always better at that sort of thing. I worked better with my hands. Guess that's why I got a job in construction while you got your education. While out stalking the machines, I saw something that left me with this awful, stomach-eating dread. The kind of dread that has you writing letters to your missing sister, I guess. The kind of sadness that makes you want to sit in silence and wait for the leaves and snow to cover you. Smoke rises on the horizon from where my camp is. I don't want to think about what it means that I can still see the glow of embers here in the dead of night. It took me a while to realize it at first. All I heard was a distant paw. When I clambered a tree to take a look around, I saw that thin pillar of smoke from far away. It was so thin, it was like I'd drawn it in the sky with my pencil. But that smoke is coming from my camp, where all my friends are. I know it is. I know in my heart it is. And I want to be sick. It's still smoking as I write this. Moscar is up in smoke. I wish I could have run towards that smoke. Even though it's several days journey on foot, and there's no solid proof the home camp is even in danger, I shouldn't have ventured this far out. I should be there with them now. I promised Kenneth I'd help him build the new walls next weekend, but I decided to play investigator instead and follow those strange cables the machines had built. Stupid. I'm so stupid. My friends are in danger, injured, or even worse. The only other people I've seen since this whole calamity began, and I don't even know if they're alive. You might be dead too, Marta. I've been looking for you everywhere, and I can't find you anywhere. It's so lonely out here. I wish I was with you and your children. I miss my nieces and my nephew. Please forgive me, Moya Mishka. I'm so afraid. Always yours, Yannick. December 27th over the 28th, 1989. Dear Bassa, if you're still alive. Dear Marta, if you aren't. Who am I even writing these for? To, to whom it may concern? Let's go with that. Lost track of time. I think I've made camp three times since the last note. I didn't know what else to do, so I kept following those power lines I found. The ones leading south. This might not have been the best idea, but... It was better than sitting around biting my nails. 
Unfortunately, the machines were out scouting for more survivors to scoop up. God only knows what they do with the people they take. Even from this far away, I can still see the smoke. Surely if Kala and the others were still there, they would have put it out by now. Am I all alone? Am I writing these letters to no one? In any case, they spotted me when I got too close to their fort and tripped an alarm. The machine had chased me all the way down the hills, and I'd lost all but one when I tripped and sprained my ankle. So careless. I'd never forgive myself if that were the end of me, but I didn't want to attract attention with gunfire. So I lured it by the little hidey hole I had, waited for it to run past, and jumped out like it owed me money. I hammered the hell out of it. Ever since that first day when the machines dropped on my construction site, I held on to my sledgehammer. Takes up a lot of space, but there's nothing like slamming a machine until it crumples like a tin can. After that, I limped away to lick my wounds. I still came out the victor in the end, even though I'm still shaking as I write this. I can't think about it or I start shaking even harder. When did it become normal to smash killer machines? It's got to be some kind of poetry. I feel as though I've hunted a mammoth. As though I've invented fire. I'm alive. I'm alive and so, so high on pain meds. Christ, my ankle hurts. I think I should stop writing now. Good night, Yannick. Dear whoever, Happy New Year. This town is so quiet, almost peaceful. It reminds me of that one winter I spent with my sister, Marta, when a blizzard hit. Everyone warned us to stay inside, but we were so stir-crazy we went out for a walk the moment it looked clear. The snow ate up all the noise until it felt like we were the only humans left on Earth. Now it really feels like I'm the only person left alive. It's so lonely. I can still see the smoke in the distance of my old camp. Poor Freddy and Bassett and Cal. I, I really hope they're okay. I've come this far to gather information on the machines. If we don't get any answers, then what was I even doing out here? What was, what was the point? I found two large craters in the ground where a building had stood. All that man-made structure turned into black ash. Probably only took seconds. Back in my old job, we'd level buildings sometimes, but it was never anything like this. I'm safe for now. Safe enough to write down these letters to whoever might read them. The cables running south must be important. I'm going to find out what they're for, even, even if it kills me. If you can, follow the cables south, and join me where they end. I don't want to believe I'm the last man on Earth. We have to survive. It can't end like this. Generations from now, there has to be record that we existed. Keep existing. Your friend, Yannick. Dear whoever, it's either late in December of 1989 or early January 1990. The first few weeks of the new decade. I've been keeping detailed notes on the machines ever since the very first day they dropped. Those machines have felt like a thunderbolt. I actually thought it was a thunderstorm at first. The rumbles in the ground, then the gunfire. I've always been teased for being too eager and curious. Always asking questions. Always needing answers. I hope you're a little bit like me, whoever you are reading these. I hope curiosity burns bright in you, too, and my notes shed some light on the answer. If these notes are of use to anyone, then they're worth it. The Machina have erected a gigantic furnace? Core? Shrine? Whatever it is, it's near the town. I've been trying to sketch it, but nothing does it justice. It glows bright blue and hums at all hours of the night. For days I've been limping along, following these cables all the way south, all the way here. What is it? What is this machine? A bomb? A signal carrier? Some kind of hub? 
A mother port for the machines to recharge or pass along information? Whatever it is, they protect it with a devotion that borders on reverence. Everything leads here, but the final answer slips out of my fingers every time. I'll keep watching, looking, and taking notes. It's what I'm best at. Your friend, Yannick. Dear survivor and fellow friend, I can only assume whoever is reading this is human. If so, that makes us allies. If you've found this note or any of the others I've left, then you should know this will be the last one. I've run out of writing material. I need to keep some for my own personal research notes. Before all of this happened, my job was wiring, electricity, things like that. I fancied myself a little bit of an engineer. Cables, you know. We were out on a new build site up north when the first evacuation orders came out. Those never reached where we were doing construction, so when the machines arrived, we were caught by surprise. I tried finding my sister and her family in Ostervik, only to find it abandoned. After that, I grouped up with fellow survivors on the archipelago, figuring it would be easier to defend. For the past few days, I've been trying to figure out what the machines are planning to do next. It might be a fruitless quest, but it's what has driven me this far. I'm exhausted, and my ankle is so swollen it looks like a damn grapefruit. This might be the end of my journey on foot. I'm going to see if any of these old boats are seaworthy. Even if they aren't, by hell or high water, I'm gonna get my way back to dig up what's left of our Moscar camp. If the others are still alive, they need to know about what I found out here. It's my sincerest hope to find you there too, whoever you are. Keep hope. One day, we'll be together again with our families and our friends. One day, we'll be safe again, and we can walk without fear. Humans are very good at surviving. It's what we do best. Stay alive. Your friend, as always, Yannick. So before we move on to whatever's next for Generation Zero, I thought it would be good to get us all on the same base with our new important character, Yannick. His story is a harrowing one, progressing through machine lands, fighting and surviving, looking for his lost sister, and experiencing the loss of his fellow resistance fighters to the Phoenix Mega Cannon. And even though this stuff's quite aged at this point, with certain things like the Soviets having come true here in the game, still there are things to keep in mind that we might see added or expanded on in the future of Generation Zero here. First up is harvesters carrying crates and transporting supplies. This is something that could someday be visualized, and maybe we could target these harvester convoys for large amounts of resources. There was forewarning of the Soviet invasion way before landfall ever happened. Uh, everything was leading up to landfall in a big way, and it was something that I was actually uh, kind of guessing myself that the Soviets were going to invade. Next up are machines building structures like humanity. This kind of like constant iteration of Phoenix trying to rebuild civilization in his own means. There's also the big furnace machine. This is something very curious that we haven't seen any other mention of from this point. Uh, so it's very curious to see maybe whether or not we'll come across a giant furnace machine ourselves. Yannick himself will be a very pivotal character in the future of Generation Zero. He could be a potential quest giver, and as well, he seems like he'll be combat worthy after his ankle heals. The next thing is, will we find Marta? This is kind of going in relation to Yannick being a potential quest giver, but maybe someday we'll have to go off and rescue Marta and her little family there. And then lastly, these letters were written during Phoenix Rising, which sets the current date of Generation Zero after Resistance and Landfall uh, in either mid to late March or early on in April in the 90s. Lastly, huge shoutouts to Spencer Radio 5 for tipping me off to these letters in the first place. You're an absolute legend, my dude. 
So the stage is very much set for the next upcoming updates and DLC that we're going to see here in Generation Zero. With a massive cast of characters that's growing as we go through these updates and as well having some very interesting characters that I'm excited to meet. The future of Generation Zero just gets so much more hype as we go along, dudes. So thank you very much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.